Hey guys, it's Rick the Middle Class Millennial, and today we have the Rainbird in-ground sprinkle with Click and Go Hose Connect. I already have these for my front and backyard. They're really good alternative. They're not quite underground sprinklers, but you kind of you don't get near the digging that you do with underground sprinklers. And it's nice because once you set it, you set it and forget it. So you just hook your hose into it when you need to water it, and that's all you gotta do is drag a hose around. But uh, and it'll come with these, these little quick connectors. Um, it'll come with two of them, and how it looks when it's set up is like this. You open this bad boy up here, and you run your garden hose on the end of this, and you just go in and it quick connects like this. The cool thing is it's designed to work under pressure, so when you disconnect this, um, water will not spray everywhere. And then you can quickly go to the next uh, sprinkler and psh, no problem. So just I'd highly recommend turn your water off and do not leave these on and leave them under pressure though, of course. Um, but when you're doing your sprinkler run, it's a great deal. Now before you go and put it together, one thing I'd recommend is depending on what you're doing, it wouldn't be a bad idea to already, if you want, go ahead and adjust this ahead of time. You can see this little cap right here. Get yourself a flathead, come into the groove there, pop her out. Once you pop her out, you're gonna see these little grooves in here. Use that as an anchor point and start pulling it up. And then, spring activated, obviously. Takes a little bit of trying, but once you get it, pull it up, grab it by the neck, pull it up. As you can see, I'm planning on t having this run in a continuous circle, so I flip this flipper up. You wanna have this in the up position if you want it to go in 360. You can also adjust the spray nozzle. It's kind of hard to see here, but this one's a blue one. They have different colors, I think for different spray streams and stuff that you can get at the hardware store. This one's blue, as you can see. Um, also to adjust your range, you have this little set screw here. The more you turn this in, the wider the stream, but the less distance it goes. I have this screwed in all the way because I want it to be kind of a short range center of the yard sprinkler, but has a nice spread to it. So I've already got that pre-adjusted, but it may not hurt to adjust these, at least do most of your adjustments before you stick it in the ground. So anyway, there's that. Just pop it in like that. Set it back in. Okay, so real quick on to setting this up, pretty straightforward. You're gonna go ahead and take your little quick connect device. Make sure this is over one of the hooks here and just run it in like this as so and then oop, oh wrong direction loop it in like this as such and go in here and, and hook her up it's kind of hard doing this with the camera in front of me like that there you go snap it on and then what I like to use is good old Teflon tape. You don't have to, I mean, it's irrigation, but if you wanna maintain good water pressure, cause I have irrigation, the water pressure isn't great, but it's not terrible. I like to have as much water pressure as possible. So I'm gonna make sure to put Teflon tape on the uh, sprinkler end. And I'm not a plumber, so you know, you can make fun of my Teflon state tape skills all you want, you plumbers out there if you're watching. Um, anyway, I'm sure they got some tips to tell me, hey Rick, you should do it this way. The cool thing is these are interchangeable, so this breaks, you can always screw another one on. So you can always get these at the hardware store, you don't have to buy the whole kit. Oh, another thing to note too, this always sits high, slightly higher than this, so when we go to stick it in the ground, that's something you do need to keep note of. It's kind of hard to see in the camera here. But this sits about, in metric terms, a couple millimeters, or a sixteenth or an eighth above this. Not a big deal, this pipe is flexible, you can bend it as such. First, you're gonna wanna figure out where you want your sprinkler. I've already measured and marked. I want it in the center of my backyard here. I'll also call 811 before you dig, especially if you don't know what's down here. So once you got your hole, make sure it sets, make sure it's flush, make sure it's also low enough that it's gonna be below the soil or below the grass line so you don't mow over it. You wanna be able to mow over the top of it. Also too, when you're mowing, make sure to have these secure. I've actually had a mower eat the lid off of one of these things that actually wasn't tightened all the way and it pulled it up and destroyed it. So I got a rock sitting over there now. I decided also too to position it to where my quick hose connect is, is the closest to my irrigation line over there, my irrigation hose. So anyway, so we'll go ahead and bury this. Um, also too, if you're not sure if the position you set is good, you can always test it by leaving it partially buried and hooking it up, I'd recommend that as well. And if I want, I'm gonna break up some of this sod and kind of stick it around, make it look decent. We're gonna go ahead and hook it up. I don't know which direction it's gonna spray probably at me. I'm gonna find out. Nope. You know, it's the other direction. So let's see if we can, there we go. That's where we want it. If I have it on the short spray, 
kind of hard to see, isn't it? Whoa, whoa, crap. This is pretty easy to change out too, just this quick. Just simply pick it up. I, don't, I have the cap missing here, so I have to use a rock. Just drag it on over. And simply, let me not get wet in the process. I got some gas cans behind me. Old ones, they're empty. There we go. There you go, it's swapped on over. No problem. And then you gotta figure out how to get past here without getting wet. Am I able to recommend the Rainbird click and go sprinkler system? Yes, it has many pros. One of them is you can easily set up several of these in an hour if you know where to put them. The other thing is they're impact sprinklers. So if you have dirty irrigation water like I have, you don't have to worry about your irrigation water plugging these up, no problem. Plus, if you want to run poly pipe later and actually build a system off of what's here down the road, you can easily. The biggest con is the, the click and go lids, the lids that actually cover the click and go connection system. I've actually had several of them where the cables have snapped off already, and I've had one where I didn't, it was my fault. I didn't have the lid secure all the way. I went over it with a lawnmower, it sucked it up and destroyed it. As far as I know, on the Rainbird website, you cannot purchase these parts separately. If you want to have more of these lids, you will have to buy a whole new set, which is like 29 bucks to on Amazon to I think like $45 on the Rainbird website. So, and you will need to keep these covered because if you don't cover these with some kind of lid in the winter time, snow and ice, snow and water is going to get in there. And it's going to freeze and damage your sprinkler system. So you got to keep moisture from going down that tube in the winter time. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and uh, you guys have a great day.